Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the RC West Committee Oversight Committee Q4 meeting. My name is Elena Coppola of Alford, representing ISO Stakeholder Affairs at the California ISO, and I will be facilitating the web conference today. I'm joined by Chris Hoffman, Oversight Committee Chair, and Chris Hanford, Oversight Committee Vice Chair, and um, we are joined by folks in, in the room at Portland Panel Electric. So that's the other video you see there. So uh, before we get started, a couple of housekeeping reminders. Uh, this call is being recorded for informational and convenience purposes. Please request permission from RC West before reprinting any related transcriptions. And the materials related to this are available on kaiso.com under Stay Informed and the RC West tab. Um, if you are connected to audio through your computer or use a call me option, you can select the raised hand icon at the bottom of your screen. Or if you dialed in phone only, then you can hit pound two um, to raise your hands. And this is also how we're going to be doing roll call today. Um, and please remember to state your name and affiliation um, if you have your hand raised for a question or a comment. If you need technical assistance during the meeting, you can send a chat to the event producer. Today's event producer is Michelle. And you can send your question in the chat to either me, Elena Corporal Belford, or all the panelists. Um, our agenda for today is uh, we're going to start with oversight committee business by Chris Hoffman. Uh, we're going to start with roll call and then vote on the annual charter. And then we're going to go over to RC West operations update. Welcome with John Phipps, general operations update with Kim Beach, procedures update with Kathy Fernandez. And we're actually not um, going to have RC metrics update until Q1 of next year. Um, then we're going to move over to working group updates, uh, the solar eclipse planning, FERC 881 update, and SOL methodology changes for 2024, all presented by Roger. And then future agenda items, um, Trisha will be covering that. And without further ado, I'm handing it over to Chris. Thanks, Shalena. We'll go ahead and take the roll call first. I caught a few of you on there looking through the attendees, but we'll step through it. Do we have anyone on from Arizona Electric Power Co-op? Okay, I think I saw someone from Avista. Was there a hand for Arizona Electric? Yeah. Yes. Yeah? Okay. Uh, how about Avon Grid Renewables? Got me back. That's on center. Um. And Chris, I'm sorry, Chris. Can you confirm? Was there anyone for Avista? If you see a hand, yeah, yeah, just. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how about Avangrid Renewables? Okay, Air APS. <coughs> sure if Mackenzie got back on or not. Uh, how about bank? I'm sorry to interrupt. Oh. I'm sorry to interrupt. As a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, we do not need to unmute today. The request is that you press the raise hand icon within WebEx as we go through roll call. Thank you. And can you confirm for Avangrid? Yeah, there's Avangrid. Okay. Thanks, kid. Uh, how about bank? Okay, I did see Chris is on with me from bank. Bonneville. Uh, we've got Kaiso here. I did see Sanase on here. How about Chalant? Oh, yeah, Chris. Sorry. <laughs> That's Chris. Uh, yeah. Uh, how about yeah, it? Sorry, say that again. Yeah, Shalane's in the room. Okay, thank you. All the way down here. I know. <laughs> <laughs> right over the top. Uh, how about city? Oh, sorry, Hatch Hatchy. Do we have any on? Brian is Brian on? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, Just a about, second. I think Hatch Hatchy is out of order on mine. I just saw Brian, so. We got it. Yolanda, I'm taking roll at the same time so we can sync back up afterwards. Got it. Okay. Uh, I didn't see anyone from City of Reading. How about Douglas County? Thanks. Uh, grid force.
on from Grant Works. Uh, how about Grant County PUD? Mike. Sorry, I got you, Mike. Thank you. Uh, Grant County. What about Idaho Power? So, uh, someone on for ID. How about Lone Star? Okay. How about LADWP? Get a hand from Glenn. Okay. And so I'll talk to you on from Modesto. How about Montana, Alberta, Ty, Mattel? Uh, nature inner. Mark. And Northwestern energy. Marcus got you. Thank you. Anyone on from NV energy. We've got Pacific Core in the room and PG&E in the room and Portland General in the room. <laughs> How about p and Got it. Thank you. Puget Sound. Sorry, Adam. <laughs> uh, Salt River, yes. How about Southern Cal Edison? Tim, thank you. Uh, San Diego Gas and Electric. Seattle City Light. See anyone? Silicon Valley. Anyone on from SMUD? Saw someone on from Snohomish, saw someone on from Tacoma. How about Trans Bay Cable? Okay, Tri-State. Turlock Irrigation District. Thanks, Adam. And I did see someone on from Valley Electric. What about WAPA? Okay, it looks to me like by my count, we've got 25. So we've I got just, quorum. Just make quorum. Yeah. yeah. We do have quorum. Perfect. If I missed you, just I am me and we'll get you added on there. Uh, so on to the next business, the annual charter review. I haven't received any comments or changes from anyone. Tricia, have you received anything? No, no comments received. All right, I guess we can take a vote on this one. Um, can we get a motion to? And Michelle, if you can bring, if we can bring the poll up. So this is the one we were going to test out the slide open <laughs> for voting. Um, if you're in the room and not connected via the WebEx, you have on that slide there, if you go to slido.com and the password is RC West, all lowercase with no spaces. And if you are in WebEx, um, then you can vote on the right and then it'll, it'll give us a percentage. And if we see later that there's more than one person from the same entity, then we'll remove the extras. So, so I'm just going to give a couple minutes in. How about uh, what? Five minutes. Perfect. One minute. Yeah, we have we have uh, what they're twenty. We have twenty six people or twenty six companies. So hopefully we'll we'll get twenty six. Twenty six minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I say hopefully we'll get twenty six votes and feature unique no duplication in company. <laughs> All 
are, are, it, are we able to see the results in real time or is it after the fact? Uh, we'll see the results, I think, when the poll closes. So far, 16, uh, 17 people have voted. Dave Delphi should be. Okay. Dave Delphi, you're voting for the SOPA, please. John, I saw Dave just step out. I'll give him a heads up right now. Brian, you can vote for us. Okay. Yay. <laughs> 19. Is there anybody that in the room maybe also needs more time? West is the password. Right. Did you do yours? Good. I did. <laughs> I was going to go ahead and vote for you. <laughs> okay, it looks like we leveled out at 20. Okay, well, potentially some people are still trying to get into the Slido. Give it a couple of minutes. You won. But we'll see if this works in a minute. Or is quorum, how many is quorum, Elena? 25? Let me see. Showing 42 participants. Okay, so maybe it's 21. It's hard to tell if it's quorum since I can't tell if it's multiple votes from the same organization. But in theory, 21 should be. Um, so as it's sitting right now, 23 approved, and then one or two abstained. And Okay, so what, what we can do is we can review the results after and, if, yeah. and then if we didn't get enough yays, then we'll we'll send out and request email vote. Perfect. Okay, with that, it looks like the annual charter review passes at this time until further results are reviewed. Uh, uh, what else do we have to review? Oh, that's not totally executive, sorry. Um, Elena, you want to go to the next slide? Or is there anything anybody wants to review on the annual charter? Sorry. Okay, Tim, I think you're up. Good evening, everybody. Tim Beach here. I'll do a quick operations update. Some of this will be a bit of a repeat from this morning, so I'll go over that very quickly. Uh, workload, so no changes from our last time we met. Uh, we had a year, year to date peak of 126, 317 megawatts. Uh, historical records 130.9, 130,986 megawatts. No change there um, as well. So we're through that. Um, again, here are our EAs uh, again for this year, those in the room and on the workshop this morning saw, but I'll just repeat just quickly for those that may have missed this morning. We had 25 on the year. All six EA threes were related to arming firm load or contingency reserves, something that we're seeing much more of and we'll continue to see more of that as the years years uh, go by or in the future, I should say. Uh, looking at our sort of our statistics, I mentioned this last week and I Last uh, meetings I went through and just sort of looked at what we had for the year. Uh, in the interim period, for instance, since we last met, we had three EA1s. Those were all related to uh, a, a BA needing emergency uh, energy and being required to be in an emergency condition to receive that. So that's three of those. Uh, we had an EA3 that was also at the same, by that same PBA 
uh, for arming firm load. We have one insecure operating state that was, of course, mitigated during that time. Uh, we didn't approach any IRO margins. We didn't have any mitigation there or, or an exceedance. Now we have 48 forced outages or 345 in primary equipment. So that includes uh, large generators, includes all 345 lines and transformers, the 500 kV lines and transformers. We had some frequency excursions, so it's not, not necessarily being FTL, but it was rose to the point where the RC made a log on and what he found and that type of thing. So that's uh, pretty consistent. Uh, last period we had 16, so a little bit, all our statistics have improved a little bit over the time. We mitigated on 51 events. We had 51 log events where there was mitigation. A number of those were on MOSA difficulty where we do have a good operating guide in place now, but we create a log every time making sure we memorialize or record that uh, both um, entities on each side of the seam have implemented, implemented market mitigation on their side. So that was a good, good portion of those events was those. Um, we had three oscillations over that same period. One of them was a Sonora we talked about this morning as well. Um, can you see reserve events? So we had uh, six BAs or six events related to contingency reserves. Some of those are reflected in the EAs, two others are, are not. Uh, they were able to recover in time by uh, getting energy from the pool. So that wasn't an issue. Four wildfires, so wildfires are way down over this period of time. Now, these are just the wildfires that we logged. So the wildfire was reported and the RC did some kind of investigation on the wildfire location, proximity or threat to the lines, that type of thing. Uh, then we had uh, one increase. We had an increase in island units. So all Alberta, they had a problem with reactor on their line on uh, path one. Uh, took the path out uh, once, and we separated on eighty three again. Uh, so they become their own island, uh, and then they had some repair where they had the island to get the reactor free and repaired, and then get back in service as well. So those should be completed now, but that was an uptick in island events. So. Getting very good at resyncing with uh, BC Hydro. And that's really it from what I reported this morning. Unless there's questions. Any questions? Okay. Thank you. I'll, I'll try to do the, one of these at the end of the year. I think I'll start to keep going this forward just so we can sort of get a feel for what the activity is on and what we're doing on the grid. I think it's a, it's a valuable statistic to have, sort of. Good indication of what we're doing. Yeah, thanks, Sam. How the year goes. Thanks. Appreciate it. Uh, looks like the working group update is next. There's Kathy on the two. Oh, Kathy should do the procedure. Sorry. I wasn't sure. This this is Kathy Fernandez. I'm coming to you with a procedure update. Um, so first, I'm showing the recently published procedures. We had RC. 520 uh, loss of monitoring and analysis tools was published on October 5th with um, just minor updates, um, updating from shift manager to manager real time operations, um, and then a couple of other administrative types of updates. RC 420 event reporting uh, was updated on 926. Um, uh, updated for um, notifying the manager real-time operations for a reportable event. Um, I think this is being covered in a, in a point coming up in a bit. Um, RC 470 loss of control center functionality published on 926. Um, various updates due to the change with um, manager real-time operations again. Um, and the same thing with RC 470B, um, that was um, update to reflect uh, the same um, published on 926, as well as RC 520, again, um, published on 926 um, for the same um, manager real-time operations and then a few other uh, minor updates. We updated RC 410, system mm -hmm. emergencies on 9.5. Minor update for the uh, EEA watch template and replaced ERC with the JIG lead. Um, that was an, um, an internal 
um, change in responsibility for emergency reporting um, or emergency um, response coordination. Um, RC 110 was published for annual review with very minor um, formatting edits only. And RC 520, again, on 810, um, that was um, minor edits. Um, and I believe that is, that is it for the recently published, I think there may be a couple more. Uh, are there any questions on this current slide? No questions, thank okay. you. Okay, if we can go ahead and go to the next, okay, perfect, thank you. Uh, RC 9570, uh, SANASE EEAs and requests for emergency assistance. That was updated regarding CAISO not providing emergency assistance when CAISO BE, I'm sorry, BA is in an EEA watch or higher. Um, and then a couple of minor edits. And then um, the last was published on August 1st, RC 9550. Um, we added the Yuma transfer overload for loss of Imperial Valley to North Hila in section four and then um, a couple of other minor updates as shown here. So that completes the recently published um, list of procedures. Uh, any questions on any of those? Okay, we can go ahead and go to the next slide. And these are just upcoming procedure updates. RC 100, um, hoping to publish that tomorrow. That's through liability coordinator authority, um, a target publish um, 1011 or 1012. Um, RC 120A, the data specification that's been coordinated externally, and um, that will be published uh, on Thursday, 1012. That was an update due to the um, NERC alert three update. RC 410, system emergencies, uh, there's a potential update. I don't have the details of what's being updated um, and that should be within the next couple weeks. I believe it's minor edits, but I'm not, I'm not sure yet. And then RC 9000, open loop guideline, we have a target publish of 1016. And um, this is an update due to um, the, uh, Actually, this is just minor, minor um, administrative types of um, updates. We're just waiting for internal coordination. So I believe um, that's it. So are there any questions regarding these upcoming procedure updates? Okay. Questions in queue. Okay, thank you. That's all I've got. Thanks, everyone. Uh, we're here. Yeah, Raja, you want to talk second? So, next one, we've got the Raja with the working group updates. <laughs> <laughs> it's next time. It's excellent. <laughs> thank you, Chris. So, I mean, for the solar eclipse like planning, you know, we've been talking across multiple forums and uh, multiple calls, right? I know but right now, I think most of the planning is done now. We're in the final stage of the operation. So one thing that I would like to remind people, folks is, right, obviously, as we go into Thursday uh, and Friday, as we do the D plus two studies and D plus one reliability studies, uh, watch out for any look at those results. I know most of you guys look at those results uh, but watch out those results if you see anything, and obviously operate RCS2 will call will call you guys right if you see any particular issue that we need to develop an operating plans, whatnot. So uh, that's where we're right now. So other than that, I mean outages, I know I know our teams have been working with you folks to look into outages, whatnot. So I'm not concerned about that much at this point. Uh, I think it's all uh, it's all action right now. So uh, let's hope everything goes well for everybody. Uh, any questions on that? Uh, I think we have, I mean, I know we have one more call. I think RTWG call this this Thursday, right? Uh, we have an RTWG call on Friday. Right, uh, yeah. Noon or one o'clock Pacific time, just to review, give everybody an opportunity if there's any problems, issues, seen anything that they had their concern about to relate to the CRC. 
Yeah, yeah, different venues for collaborate, but just reminding everybody. I know we have the reports that uh, Kaisa has published as well. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, we'll go on to the next. Uh, okay, next slide. Yeah, uh, this is the FERC order 881. Uh, again, I know we have been covering this multiple forums. I know I have been talking with a lot of you folks, uh, and, and we have been talking a lot about this project. But this is just to give a brief uh, timeline with somebody that is not plugging, plugged into those efforts that uh, RC West has undertaken with multiple uh, tech, uh, multiple working groups. Right, we have one methodology working group that we have been working with the DOPs. That's more of a uh, 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 not a public session. It's more invite only session. So I know, I know we have invited all the TOPs, but if somebody that is not, that is not a part of that uh, working group, please do let us know. We'll, we'll make sure that you are invited. It's a, it's an invite only at this point. Uh, the, the main goal of that working group is to collaborate in the rating methodologies or are more of any technical aspects of this implementation. Uh, uh, that, that we have. And there's also a data working group that where we have been more of a public forum where we have been sharing with some of the templates that we have been working on, uh, given updates. So I, I know most of you guys have, have attended the call, but right now, as you get again, this slide is for people that who are not plugged in those calls. We have split this whole project into three different tracks. The track one is the real time reliability applications. Uh, that part, we are actually working uh, with Siemens to implement our tools uh, and enable uh, a, a, a process where we can actually receive the real time ratings, uh, real time ambient just ARs through the ICCP. So uh, that data will be just used in our reliability applications, right? I know RC West has uh, real time reliability applications. So we'll be using that in those components. So again, it's not a requirement. If somebody is ready, we're going to work with them. I know we're already actually working with some of the TOPs to start mapping those data because as you guys know, right, you want to send ICCP, you need to make sure our mappings match with your mappings. So that's all manual. So you need to establish that connection first. So uh, we're working with the PTOs and TOPs that are that actually can send the data. So we'll, we'll work with the mapping throughout the next two quarters. And once our tools are ready, expected by Q2 2024, then we'll plan start utilizing those data in our real-time tools. So, and just to bridge yep. a little bit, that target, so because the model timelines are long, um, we mentioned earlier that the data specification um, for IRO 10 is being updated later this week. It includes the updated template for accepting that data because the model submission time frame to start being ready for spring would be you know starting to submit here in, in q4 and in the, in the beginning of the year so for anybody that's ready we've got the template there and and then we've got one of our contacts on our ems team is is working with people to you know kind of test and do the mapping yeah. that raj was talking about so it doesn't necessarily mean that we'll be using it in that time frame but but we're yeah. you know, putting together the mechanism to start receiving it yeah, if you were again, as I said, it's all manual mapping, right? You cannot do everything at once. So yeah, so we are stacked. We are working with each TOP individually and working on those uh, mappings. So yeah, the data is getting ready, but the tools are not ready yet. So once the tools are ready, we'll upload them at that point. That's the plan. Uh, the track two, this is, I mean, there's a lot of different components in track two, but the main uh, component of track two is uh, development of the look ahead application where we can receive the 240 hours of look ahead ratings that the TOPs will send uh, into our process. So uh, we have decided to go with OETA. OETA has a web line R product. It's 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 a new product. You know, they had they don't have anything developed yet. Uh, so they are planning to work with us to uh, we have I mean, we have initially talked with them the specifications what we want. So they're going to uh, develop the tool exactly what we want, how it want. Right? So. That tool will interface with the TOPs uh, across the RC West footprint to uh, to cut, to receive the look ahead ratings, uh, as well as uh, 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 down the line, our goal is to receive the seasonal ratings for the RC West customers through that process as well. You know, today seasonal ratings is only through the monthly model process. If you guys remember, right, monthly model promotion process. Uh, uh, what we plan to do is utilize this tool to receive those seasonal ratings. So if there's any updates to the seasonal ratings, which we don't foresee that that often, but if there's any update to the seasonal ratings, there's an opportunity for the TOPs to submit to this new tool. Then that ratings will process into, I mean, it automatically transition into all our tools uh, without any manual intervention. At least that is our goal uh, with this new process, want to automate things, how we exchange ratings. So 
Uh, that tool will be ready again by end of next year, but it doesn't mean uh, the TOPs will, uh, will be ready, right? So as the TOPs can start sending the data, we'll, we'll work with you guys and test it out and, and go from there. I, I know I've been talking with most of you guys and, and, and you are planning to start working on your tools. So our intention is we have agreed with OETA now. So once uh, once the final contract is signed, we'll, uh, we'll start working with them and uh, design the uh, specification templates. What is the process? What is, what is going to be methodology? How are we going to receive it? So most of it is going to be automated process. That's why we're going to uh, uh, specify that, document it, and provide that information to you folks. So you can start working on your side uh, uh, with whatever vendor, whatever tools that you want, internal development, and then provide that specification to us. So, uh, uh, watch out in the next quarter. We'll 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 finalize that and share that information with you folks, and then go from there. Uh, that is our plan. Again, there is again track two and track three is is is, is everything else, right? Uh, you know, RC West as is Kaiso. Uh, Kaiso has the market components, and RC West has the all the look ahead reliability applications, and as I mentioned, D plus one studies. D plus two and D plus three studies, as well as the look ahead uh, outage studies, the short term outage studies, right? Seven days ahead. Uh, technically, we are supposed to use this uh, look ahead ratings in those outage study process as well. So, so it impacts every uh, all of our tools. So we plan to develop, make changes to all those tools in our track three application and the track three uh, project timeline. So, uh, it's this is really uh, at this point we have identified some resource constraints, especially with. Uh, with our vendors uh, and, and on our side as well. So we're trying to determine uh, uh, technically what can we complete within the FERC timeline. Uh, if, if we identify anything that we cannot complete, we plan to go to FERC and seek for an extension. Uh, so that's what we are. Uh, we, we have identified the constraints, but we haven't finalized what tools will be impacted uh, 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 by, by children. So uh, watch out for those. Again, if we, if we decide on uh, extending the asking for an extension of a timeline, we'll definitely inform you folks so you can you can plan around that as well. So what does that mean, right? Because uh, if if we plan to say, hey, day hit market, real time market, can we, we can start utilizing the data, but uh, maybe the outage studies, seven days outage studies, we might not be able to utilize those look ahead ratings. So some of those we are working internally. Any questions on those timelines? Any questions online? There are no questions. Thank you. And also just timeline wise for, for your folks, like the track one is the one that we're like immediately focused on. So, but that also means since we're talking about the real time reliability applications for the HANA users, this you would be seeing. So, if you start providing us uh, the ICCP um, ambient adjusted ratings, you would start seeing those coming through in HANA as well. So, that, that's kind of completing the loop for us. It's not just the receipt of it, but it's getting it to actually alarm in EMS yep. and actually show up in RTCA and HANA. Is Siemens going to do like a drop down menu for your operators or? So we are we have we have asked for we haven't seen anything visually yet uh, like you know we're working with Siemens so ultimately we want to make sure that the operators can see this right in a in a clean fashion so that's what we have put in request so uh, we haven't seen any the final uh, user interface yet for us to determine how exactly it's going to look like but that is our goal uh, we are able, at least for us to. Uh, even with this look ahead tool we and everything we plan to make sure that we know what ratings are being used uh, the operators know what ratings are being used whether it's a seasonal rating or AR or right if there's something is not coming correctly the fallback is seasonal rating or the fallback is outage uh, related rating but we want to make sure that the operators can is aware of that are you going to be able to share so if your operators are seeing something can we share some sort of an online Okay. And box of sorts where we can yeah. show you what we're seeing and you see what. Yeah, I think so. De definitely, like while we're doing the training and the testing parts, and then like the, the HANA, we would be seeing we'd be seeing what what should be the monitored rating, right? And so that's we it, that should be exactly what we're looking yeah, at. Of course, the enforced rating. Yeah, that's the enforced rating. So we would definitely be seeing that, and then and then the webline R, everybody will have visibility to all the ratings in the webline R. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's been possible. Yeah, it's been yeah. Possible. Whatever's an RTC, if an RC is going to be exactly what's showing now. That's yeah. just a duplication of their screen. So there's. And it's just right. It's the same data that's coming in. Yeah, and all but I think the 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 the, the struggle will be uh, the look ahead applications, right? The seven days out, the outage studies that we're using, right? So 
uh, the ratings that we gain. I think D plus two, D plus one, if we, we post the results, right, we do post all our uh, reliability results that we see. So any of those overloads can actually check, make sure that the rating that we are that we are utilizing in those process is matching with what you're sending, right? There's an opportunity for you guys to check. But if there's a constraint that is missing, uh, that is not showing in those results, and we, we are using a rating, there's no way for us to uh, uh, check unless you guys have a problem. Because, uh, 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 let me, let's think about that, but the good question is an opportunity for us to, uh, uh, because you can see the results, but we yeah. cannot see what you're using, right? Yeah, and uh, we, uh, we haven't uh, finished the business requirements yeah, yeah. on that track for you yet, so I think that's a good idea to think about that we need, yeah. we, we should be using the same ratings for like for the outage studies and these yeah, should have shared visibility. Yeah, I think we're getting a little concerned with the Arizona with the heat wise because we're concerned that that's going to identify needs to go to D rate our lines. Yeah, I, I think what we're going to put for is four in there. Well, go below those. Okay, go, okay, we'll go below the ratings, but I think it's something we need to make sure we're working through that. Advance of that. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. we'll go through it pretty intensive through UAT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we'd be able to wrap in, you know, SRP or wherever. Some of that, especially on the hand. Yeah, yeah. I think real time. I'm not ready because at the end of the day, the real time is coming to ICCP. It's the same thing is flowing. I think it's about the look at studies. I think that is going to be key for us to make sure that we are using the right ratings and you have confidence that what are the you are sending yeah. we are using, right? I'm assuming, right? I know testing will be done, but but a good question. Maybe. Once the testing is done, once we go production, what is that conference that are giving that we are using that, right? Maybe there's an opportunity for us to, uh, yeah. Let me, let's think. Let me let let us think about that yeah, and sorry, see what is the right way. Wait. No, but it's a good question. There's nothing wrong because there's 240 hours of readings coming in every hour, right? right? Things can go wrong easily, right? I mean, it's coming every hour, right? So how do we make sure we have the right ratings? No, we have validations, but how do we make sure the end to end we are getting those same ratings being used now the tools right that that is yeah, definitely a good question there will be some joint there will be some training for the yeah right. so yeah you know, perhaps we can do a joint simulation that kind of thing as well um to to work through a transition period this is the rating today this is the look ahead rating how we're going to handle that yeah. I think that would be important I think so. I mean, testing will be done, but it's more one of the product testing is done. Once you go to production, what is the conference that are giving, right? Yeah. But yeah, let's think about that and see what can um, we random checks, right? That we are. Well, yeah, yeah. Some production validation. Okay. Next slide, please. Okay. Uh, again, I, I talked about that. We are collecting the data with the, some of the TOPs, right? Uh, all the mappings, manual mapping. So there's no other way for us to automate this. It's a SCADA mapping. We all know it's a, it's a manual mapping that we need to do. So, uh, next slide, please. So this is one I I think I've been talking at a couple of forums about the fallback reading process. You know, uh, right? This is this is another one that industry is also interested in it, right? Uh, even the fur carter actually mentioned what is your fall uh, right what foul by creating that that the TOs need to use uh, so uh, we have a uh, process uh, how we fall back on what we fall back so I'm going to talk about what is the process right uh, so but we this is we, we plan to build in our real-time process we're gonna plan to build a, a template for each TOP uh, or the BA where they can set up what is the duration how long we'll use the uh, ICCP coming in? It doesn't get updated more than 60 minutes. We can fall back to the original rating. That is one way we are defining. So 60 minutes is the initial time that we want to go for each TOP. Uh, but again, we can adjust based upon the discussion with the TOP. So once we go to the implementation stage, let's let's talk through it and and determine, make sure that we uh, we are using the same uh, we are using the same duration that you guys want us to use. So let's let, let's talk more. The 60 minutes seems to be appropriate because it's an hourly reading that FERC is requiring us to calculate. So that's what we're going to with 60 mm -hmm. minutes. So again, this is the new one that we are working with our vendor to implement. It's not in production yet. Once in production, we can enable that 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 option. So next slide, please. So this is the priorities for reading switch. Uh, right, uh, this priority one, two, three, four, five. You know, priority one is always the manual ICCP and manual override that operators put in, right? So if operator puts in override, that is the priority. No matter what is going on, that will be used. So normally the operators are not going to put anything unless they are 
the unless they get a feedback from the TOP that something is not right with the seasonal ratings or something is not right with the outage related ratings or not. So, uh, right. So right now, again, because we don't update seasonal rating that often, right? There's only monthly model promotion. So there's more opportunities for us to manually enter it. But once we go into this new process, we want to enable more up and automation. So if there's a issue that you find a seasonal rating, you can update right away in the tool and that process it. So there's no manual intervention that is needed, right? So that is our hope. The priority two is the dynamic limits, right? The ICCP, uh, if it's coming to ICCP, uh, we'll use those ICCP ratings in the real time. And the priority three is the OMS, this outage management system limits, right? Uh, you know, we can, uh, we have a system where we can actually uh, outage related D rate can automatically flow through into our process. So uh, we plan to use that, uh, 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 that, that particular function, right? And the priority four is the forecasted rating. So this is the, when the web planner product is uh, up and live and the TOPs are actually providing those forecasted rating to, to, to that tool. So what we plan to use, uh, do is uh, get those next hour ratings from that process into our uh, EMS, EMA environment where we can fall back to that before fall back to the seasonal rating. So the idea is if ICCP is broken down, uh, TUP is actually sending our head ratings into the new tool, so we can use that our head ratings, right? If the our head rating is bad, we can fall back to seasonal ratings, but that is our intention uh, to fall back onto the our head ratings. Work doesn't require that, but we just felt this might be an appropriate uh, uh, worthwhile for us to actually implement that strategy uh, from a fallback. Any questions uh, on the fallback rating process? Next slide, please. Okay, the, I think this is the last part of the agenda on, on the working groups. I know we have created a task force, right? Um, that 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 uh, Li Ching Jin from our, my team actually led that effort to most of you guys actually participated in and, and helped us finalize our SOL methodology changes. Uh, thanks for all your efforts. I think the document is ready to go. Uh, it's, I mean, the, the all the standard, faculty standard changes are ready. I mean, are effective by April 1st, 2024. Uh, so, once that date hits, we'll post that new SOL methodology document and we plan to start using that. Again, the main changes, I know every one of you already know, but just wanted to document the main changes with, uh, with, with, with respect to this new SOL methodology is related to, uh, again, related to how do you define an SOL exceedance, right? Uh, what do you, how do you define an SOL exceedance and what time duration RCs and operators have to take action on, how much time they have to, to take action on, on the particular so uh, so you can you can different ways right if you have emergency ratings you can use them in your pre contingency what do you mean by right you have a normal rating and you have emergency rating and your emergency rating has a duration and if the flows are about normal rating technically it's not sol exceedance if it doesn't exceed the emergency rating you have that time uh, to, to 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 solve that issue before you declare an sol exceedance right this is more of a uh, Performance criteria that NERC wanted to develop and make sure that all the TOPs across the uh, uh, both interconnects follow. But luckily for us, we actually do RC West and RC West TOPs actually implement most of this as of right now. So it's not a huge change from 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 RC West point of view. But again, those are the changes, uh, right? And and there's also language surrounding communication. So communication of a soil exceedance when the RC needs to communicate, when the TOPs needs to call RC. So. Uh, again, we plan to before we go live, we plan to have a couple of calls, uh, right? Tim, we plan to have a couple of calls with the TUPs and and make sure we're on the same page with 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 this uh, with this communication uh, channels, whatnot. And that's the joint RGW. Yeah. yeah. So we'll definitely have more communication <laughs> before we go live. So there's also some changes with uh, how do you define a stability limit and what are you supposed to do and what the RC RCs are supposed to validate some of the voltage uh, some of the voltage stabilities issues. So. Uh, we do expect to work with the TOPs and uh, and plan to validate those uh, uh, stabilities, especially stability issues that impact the neighboring TOPs, right? So that is the main language. If you have a stability issue within your system that impacts the neighboring TOPs, RCs are supposed to start validating those uh, those those SO, those voltage stabilities. So what we plan to do is, uh, at least uh, theoretically, what I'm thinking is, uh, I plan to use uh, the summer assessments. Uh, as an op as an opportunity for us to include those studies in those assessments, and 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 that way we can 
uh, tick the both boxes, summer assessment studies as well, validating the voltage stability. So that's why I plan to uh, work with you folks and, and implement that when we get there. So. So I think those are the main main changes from uh, um, the SOL methodology chain summary. So the emergence rating duration, again, as I mentioned, the emergence rating duration is the one 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 major change. So uh, right now we don't collect those emergence rating durations from the TOPs, but we plan to start collecting uh, as part of this pack level standard changes. So uh, once our tools are ready, we plan to collect those emergence rating durations from you folks and actually alarm. Uh, using those emergency rating duration in the control room. So what do I mean by, right? You have a normal rating and you have two emergency ratings and your one emergency rating has a four hour rating uh, duration, the other one has 30 minute rating. So we can start collecting that information and put it in our RTCA. So uh, the RTC can actually start alarming based upon where the flows are. Is it is it still be the four hour, four hour duration? Then use the four hour duration for, for alarming operators. And yeah, that, so just, just more, uh, a more transparency for operators, right? Uh, right. So today, we have the we we know that we, we we don't we don't have a good view of what those emergency rating durations RCs don't have the good view uh, uh, from it. I mean, they, when they talk with the TOPs, they have an idea, but on the displays, they don't have which rating is related to which which duration. So hopefully, this one will enable more transparency for operators and more transparency for TOPs as well. Uh, yeah. Right. So, so Roger, then. Um... You'll be taking the duration from what's in the registry today. Is that correct? For the for the PTOs, that is the correct for the TOPs. But again, we plan to collect, develop a template, and collect the data and 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 and, and implement that in our tools. So we'll work with the PTOs. We can work with the TOPs. We don't have that information today. Yeah. Okay. Big questions. So yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll communicate more again. April is approaching. So once our tools are ready, we'll, we'll start collecting the data and, and, and alarm operators. I think that's it right from slides point of view. Can you go to the next slide, please? Yeah. Chris, it's your floor. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I think Rachel is up next with the data exchange or is that. I, I don't think we have. Um... Not we had any data exchange topics in the public session. Okay. Let's go to the future agenda items. <laughs> and let him, yeah. Uh, do we have the calendar? Uh, oh, proposed yeah. calendar? We, I think we might have it in the uh, executive session to talk about. So we'll be we'll be working on our 2024 meeting calendar and publishing okay. it soon. But yeah, we need it right past. Uh, the oversight committee first before we publish it to our corporate page. So is that it on our agenda? That, that may be it. I, I guess it's now just yeah, open for open public comments or questions or requests for future agenda items. <laughs> that too. <laughs> uh, if you guys come across any or think of any after we get off this meeting, please don't hesitate to yield. Email either myself or Chris Sanford on those. And uh, I think that's it. I think we can close this meeting out. Yeah. So, what time do you want to pick up the executive? So, just a note. Yes. Yeah, so, I think the executive session, Yelena, wasn't scheduled to start until uh, 2 30, but we should probably get that going at 2 o'clock because I know people will be trying to get to flights and stuff. Uh, usually, it's immediately after. So, I think that buffer. Is good, so I'll get it set up and people can make their way over there. Okay, thanks everyone for joining. Thank you. Session and thank Michelle, we can close this. That concludes our conference. Thank you for using event services. You may now disconnect.